In the last video, we discussed what are diuretics and how they work. In this video, we will learn about the first class of diuretics drugs that is thiazide diuretics in detail. Let's start with thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics prevents the reabsorption of 3 to 5% of luminal sodium in the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron thus causing natriuresis and diuresis. Hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ, chlorthalidone, and indupamide are the three thiazide diuretics that are most frequently used. Thiazide diuretics work by blocking the sodium chloride channel in the proximal section of the distal convoluted tubule. The sodium-potassium pump's efficiency is diminished when the sodium chloride channel is blocked, and the transport of sodium and water into the interstitium is also decreased, resulting in whole lot of urine collected in renal tubules and urine output increase. These medications are mostly used to treat kidney stones, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, heart failure, hypertension, high blood pressure, and kidney failure. Hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ and chlorthalidone are the two most commonly used drugs in this category. Thiazide diuretics are administered orally as tablets. Patients should take these agents in the morning with food. Both medications often need to be taken at lower doses for the treatment of hypertension, starting at 25 mg per day and increasing to 50 mg or 100 mg, respectively. Increasing the dosage should be done in accordance with the patient's specific therapeutic requirements. Dosing ranges for patients with fluid retention and edema are 50 mg to 100 mg and 50 mg to 200 mg, respectively. Adverse effects of these drugs include hypokalemia, the most well known side effect of thiazide diuretics is hypokalemia. During the first two to three weeks of HCTZ therapy, hypokalemia must be closely watched because it can be fatal. Next, hyponatremia, thiazide diuretics mechanism of action is to reduce sodium reabsorption, which leads to reduced fluid reabsorption and, ultimately, lower levels of circulating sodium. If hyponatremia were to develop, it would do so in the first two to three weeks of treatment, following this period, the patient is in a new steady state where additional salt and water losses do not take place. Next, metabolic alkalosis. Due to an increase in potassium and hydrogen ion excretion via aldosterone-mediated mechanisms in the intercalated cells of the CT, patients taking thiazide diuretics may develop a hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. Lastly, hypercalcemia. By increasing calcium reabsorption from the luminal membrane into the interstitium in exchange for sodium, thiazides reduce urine calcium levels and increase blood calcium. Along with all of this, there could be hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, and hyperuricemia. The potential increased risk of acute pancreatitis is another side effect of taking these drugs. It was proposed that thiazides cause increased pancreatic secretion and pancreatic ischemia as well as have a toxic effect on the pancreas. Thiazide diuretics must be stopped immediately by the patient and should not be recommended again if the doctor notices indications of acute pancreatitis. Next we will be talking about loop diuretics. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.